Rockwood patron comments, but I understand we do not have any. We have a microphone now. We don't have any uh, patron comments, so we'll move on. The next item is the superintendent and board comments, so I'll turn it over to our superintendent, Dr. Knost. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. <laughs> All right, a few things, a few good things. Rockwood Summit School District is proud to announce that Rockwood South uh, teacher Katie Severinsen, Rockwood Summit teacher John Frank, and Ridge Meadows teacher Steve Brim are 2016 Emerson Excellence in Teaching Award winners. Congratulations to them. Katie was just up on the stage getting another award just a little bit ago. Congratulations also to the seven teachers who have achieved their national board certification this fall. We just had them on stage. Julie Adams, Emily Benner, Bridget Brady, Michelle Dorhoff, Carrie Hall, Tracy Somerville, and Melissa Zeman. These teachers are now part of the 126 national board certified teachers in Rockwood. That's got to be some kind of a record. I would think. I know we're a big district, but still, I would think that ratio is up there. A Lafayette High School student currently going to Princeton has been selected as a Rhodes Scholar. Yes, Richard Liu is just one of 32 students chosen, chosen to be a Rhodes Scholar. Liu is currently studying chemistry at Princeton, but starting next October, he will be moving to Oxford University. Quite impressive. Rockwood School District earned first place in the state of Missouri for their work in social media engagement as part of the 2015 Missouri School Public Relations Association, also known as MOSPRA Communications Award. The district also received MOSPRA Award of Merit for Website Design as part of the transition to the uh, new rsdmo.org website. The Green Pines Adventure Club program entered the national Made by Milk Recycling Contest and created the school mascot, which was an alligator, using 565 milk cartons. And they are now in the running for a chance to win $5,000. Good luck to Green Pines. And those two were put together in my paragraph here. So uh, congrats to our communications department as well as Green Pines Adventure Club. New this month, Rockwood families can find information about their school board on the district's mobile app. This is a great way to stay up to date on board information as well as an easy way to contact the board. The app is available in the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store. A sign of the times. Check it out. And congratulations to the 2016 Cornerstone Award nominees. The Cornerstone Award honors employees who demonstrate outstanding commitment and service to the district. This year we have 47 nominees. You can see the list of nominees on the Rockwood website, and you will see who the six winners are next week. So congratulations to all. That's a very prestigious and, uh, award and something that uh, we are extremely proud of these folks for. Uh, John Shaughnessy got away from me, and I want to keep this as a positive thing, but I just think it's worth mentioning. Um, we know that Lafayette suffered, suffered a horrific tragedy last night, losing a student. And, um, you know, we try really hard to, to, you know, put our arms around our school communities when that happens. And I just, it's unfortunate. I was talking to John last night, and I said, you know, I don't mean this as a, as a, um, compliment necessarily, John, but you know the routine. It's, it's sad that, that he's had to lead his community through this a number of times. But I just feel compelled to, to really compliment John's leadership because um, it, it's tough to, to go in and, and try to say something to a school community when, when this happens, but, but John handles it with grace and um, it just, I think, considering the circumstances, I think that it was a very, very good day, as odd as that sounds, at, at, at Lafayette, I think because of all kinds of things, definitely student leadership, the faculty, the teachers, um, you know, they were just torn up but, but knew that kids come first. But John's leadership is to be commended. So I just wanted to publicly mention that, and I really meant to hold him back, um, but I still wanted to say something. I'm very proud of him and his, his leadership in that role. That's all I have. Great, thank you. Any other board members have uh, comments they'd like to make? All right. Uh, let's move on then to the next agenda item is the 
consent agenda items. I need a motion to approve the consent agenda items as submitted. Okay. A motion and a second. In a second, are there any questions or comments? Debbie, would you put up 805 contributions again? It looks like to me everybody in the audience is connected to Rocky. You may have already know this, but I can't see it there. Keep speaking, quickly. You have a cheap cookie. But there's uh, four groups that donated money this month. Crestview Parent Organization, $1,700, ride tablets. Second group is Eureka Elementary from the PTO, $8,500, $8,500. Students use in the classroom, purchase additional Chromebook carts and Chromebooks. Kellison PTO, $8,744.89. Donation Kellison by paying for circulation desk for the library. And there's two from Rockwood Summit. Tag students under the direction of Catherine Glaude Pulte. $4,000 veterans recognition. I think it's a it's a, a stone. I thought it was already being installed a couple of years ago, I guess. Now. It's a stone uh, tablet at uh, Summit High School. And then there is uh, parent organization, $7,500 for the reception area. I think it's neat too. It's every, every month you get these donations. We do appreciate them. Thank you, Dr. Kinder. Are there any other board members have a comment they'd like to make? All right, the motion on the floor is to approve the consent agenda item as submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say no. Nikita, that passes. The next agenda item, well, we're going to go to the regular agenda items at this point, and that's uh, the first one. I think we're going to have Ann Martino and Pam Hertz join us. Correct? Is this. Uh, Follow here. I need a motion to proclaim Tuesday, April 19th, 2016 as Power of Purple Day to increase support and awareness of the American Cancer Society's Relay for Life. Second. Great, thank you. Um, Director Bays has agreed to read the proclamation for us, so we can proceed with that. Whereas the American Cancer Society is the nationwide community-based voluntary health organization dedicated to eliminating cancer as a major health problem through research, education, and advocacy and service. And whereas Relay for Life is the American Cancer Society's nationwide signature activity and a celebration of life where we, come, where we celebrate, remember, and fight back. And whereas because cancer never sleeps, Relay for Life teams spend 12 hours camping out, enjoying music and family activities together, while team members walk around a track re relay style for the duration of the event. And whereas Relay for Life of Rockwood School District will be held on April 23, 2016 at Rockwood Summit High School from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. Now, therefore, we, the Rockwood School District Board of Education, do proclaim April 19, 2016, as Power of Purple Day in support of the Relay for Life event. We hereby call upon all the faculty and students to show their support for the fight against cancer by wearing relay gear or the color purple, dated this third day of December 2015, Rockwood School District Board of Education. Thank you. The American Cancer Society's Relay for Life is a celebration of life in honor and in memory of those whose lives have been touched by cancer. This is Rockwood's 16th annual Relay for Life event. Our relay has been recognized both on a national and a regional level for our fundraising accomplishments. The fundraising total for 2015 was $69,000. This money will be used to help fund cancer research, cancer support programs, and cancer prevention programs. The 2016 event will be on Saturday, April 23rd at Summit High School from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m. This year, the event leadership team's main goal is to have representation from every school, whether it's a team at the event, doing a simple fundraiser, or even just donating a basket for the Hope Baskets. The 2016 Relay for Life of Rockwood School District event leadership team is recommending the Board of Education proclaim Tuesday, April 19th as Power of Purple Day to increase support and awareness for this very powerful event. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. <laughs> 
Uh, does any board member have any comments or questions? And the motion on the floor is to approve that proclamation. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Ms. Peter, that passes. Uh, the next agenda item is um, on the Rockwood Summer Academy. I think uh, Dr. Counts and Dr. Cobb are going to join us. And the motion is to approve the Rockwood Summer Academy report and financial analysis for 2016, including a 1% salary increase for certified staff and a 3% increase for support staff. We have that motion? And a second? All right. Good evening. How are you guys tonight? Um, so I'm going to click through these first slides fairly quickly. This is all the information that you had in your board book. Um, most of it is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to start with a review of 2015. So we just listed for you the sites that hosted Summer Academy um, for 2015. So those are there for your review. Um, next, here's the actual costs from 2015 for the four-week um, Summer Academy program. There's our revenues and expenditures. As you um, recall, our summer school program um, is reimbursed by the state, and so it's a, a self-sustaining program. And in fact, you can see that um, we actually um, have a little bit of revenue that comes in um, after all of the expenditures. There's our attendance. So our district total attendance is 90%, um, and it's broken down there, broken down for you there, elementary, middle, and high school. Um, our fee-based summer programming includes community ed, adventure club, and then early childhood, and those were uh, the sites last year. <clears throat> and now we'll move ahead to our proposal for 2016 Summer Academy. Um, again, a four-week program, June 6th to July 1. Um, four sites uh, at elementary, two at middle, and two at high, so the numbers will not change. Um, here's our proposed sites, uh, the elementary schools, <coughs> the middle schools and the high schools. And again, we have some construction projects going on this summer, so um, we had to get creative in a couple places, but we found um, plenty of space that we can host all of our programs and there will be no changes in, in what we're able to offer this summer. Um, again, our fee-based program will stay about the same. Again, community ed, adventure club, and early childhood, and um, we'll, we'll work collaboratively with the adventure club to determine those elementary sites. There's the estimated budget for 2016. Um, again, with um, the benefits, the supply, salaries, benefits, supplies, and then the total. And then I'm gonna let um, Dr. Cobb speak for a moment about some of the highlights of elementary, and then I'll have some secondary things to cover with you and answer any questions. Well, I do wanna say that, as Dr. Counts said, it's a four-week program, but a lot of this work starts um, in late December and January, and I just wanna commend the staff, the elementary staff. Uh, it's a long process to get a very successful four-week program at the elementary levels and the four sites. Um, as I do my work in getting our schools ready, I'll tell you that it's a great program. It's popular among our staff, and it's successful among our students, and when the, when the summer is over, we hand progress reports to our to our staff members that help them um, start the year off with the success that's happened over the summer. So uh, the elementary sites are looking forward to another successful program and pretty happy to be a part of it, so. Excellent. Um, just a couple things to point out at the secondary level. Um, obviously, similar to what Dr. Cobb mentioned, um, it's, it's a sound program. It's, it's great for our students academically. Um, it's a good financial investment for the district. It obviously um, provides some um, support and remedial uh, interventions for kids over the summer. Um, at the middle school, and middle school courses are remedial, so again, it, it helps um, kind of close that gap with some kids that maybe have need some additional uh, resources over the summer, so it, it's obviously beneficial for that to get, help them get a jump start on the upcoming school year. And then at high school, we are able to offer a couple of enrichment courses in art, fundamental, art fundamentals and then personal fitness and wellness. Um, and then there's credit recovery in the core content areas as well. So we'll entertain any questions you might have. I did, uh, I did have three quick ones, because I know Matt doesn't want me to talk tonight. <laughs> I, I noticed that last year, the salaries last year, and the salaries this year, the difference is about $50,000. Mm -hmm. 
Is that because of increased enrollment, or is that because of the increased salaries, or what? That's a good question. Um, so the differential is, um, remember, that's last year's actual, so this is a proposed. Oh, okay. So we're kind of estimate. you know, we don't always necessarily use that full allotment for, you know, maybe class sizes might differ, um, or we might not fill a full section, so we propose it, but we may not use that, that full estimate. And then, yes, the increase is to um, provide those increases for support staff and then um, certified staff. The second question, where's that excess go at the end of the summer? We do get that excess amount. It's not, you got too much, we have to give it back or anything, do we? Right. It goes into general operating? Uh, mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Last one, real quick. I was looking at the enrollments. At the high school, it was only like 492. And unless I'm mistaken or dreaming, I thought we at one time, when I was when I was here, we had over 900 in the summertime, just at Lafayette High School, mm -hmm. which would be the Marquette weather. Has it has it gone down? Yes. Well, you wouldn't know. You would yeah, I wasn't uh, here last summer, so I that's I don't know if I'm assuming I'm assuming that yeah. It's, well, it's the yeah, the enrichment piece is not in there, and at one time there, no. there was quite a bit of enrichment. It went from a six-week program to a four-week program. There was a wide variety of cuts in 2011. Yeah. And it only went to credit recovery at that point in time. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. But the good news is that it is because it's only credit recovery and our teachers are doing a great job of interventions, fewer and fewer students are needing that credit recovery. Right. So it has gone down a little bit because our teachers are doing such a great job of it. That's what I was speculating, that that was a, that was a plus. Good. But I, I, I will mention that um, uh, coming out of last year, especially because we understand that this sustains itself financially, um, that we need to start looking at more opportunities and maybe move back in the direction of, of enrichment. Um, I think it's wise to do so, especially if it's within the financial uh, parameters. And so we're going we're gonna to start looking at those possibilities for the future. How many staff in the summer? How many certified staff? Excuse me. Um, Do you guys know? I don't know that I have the answer to that, Laura Lee. I'm sorry. That's I can okay. get that for you. I don't know if. Okay, did you know that? No. Don't worry, Bob. It's no big deal. I was just yeah. was curious more than anything. Okay. I mean, we staff similarly as we do during the school year. So, you know, it, it obviously depends on enrollment. Mm -hmm. So that'll vary okay. up until that last moment, practically. All right. Anybody else? Any comments or questions? All right, thank you. The motion on the floor is to approve the uh, report and financial analysis. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Great. Ms. Beto, that passes. Thank you, thank you very Great. much. Thank you. There was, we need to, um, this motion here is different because I don't think that, mo that motion includes the, um, the, the salary increase. Well, when we first read the motion, it did. Okay. I was just reminding okay. what that was about. And that was the financial analysis, which includes that. So, I think we're okay. Um, the, next, <laughs> the next item is uh, always hard to believe when we do this. The adoption of the 2017-2018 calendar. So not next year, but the year after that. I think Dr. Edwards and Dr. Redele is going to join us. We need a motion to postpone the approval of the 2017-18 school year calendar until December 17, 2015 Board of Education meeting. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Dr. Edwards. Good evening. Um, as you mentioned, I'm here tonight to present the 1718 district calendar. Um, I will also, like Dr. Counts, um, kind of go through this rather quickly in that you have received the PowerPoint. Um, the first one does um, talk about the district committee, and actually I have one member here, so I want to recognize Karen Brown for her time um, for you know supporting the committee. We have three meetings, and so we spend our fall first semester together as a group um, determining this. The next slide discusses the considerations, so the group has to take a look at some that are required as well as preferred. So it's very similar and repeats itself um, every year. So, sorry. Those have been the, the list for a very long time, many, many years. So our highlights, if you will, for 1718, what are some things that the committee um, determined? So our first day what is going to be Wednesday, August 16th. Wednesday, middle of the week is definitely a preferred opportunity. First, uh, last day of first semester is December 21st, and that was pretty much, there was a calendar A and a calendar B that was taken to our community. 
and a Tuesday start was a Wednesday end to the semester and a Wednesday start was a Thursday end. So that was a determination that the community needed to make. And I will uh, say that I am very confident, we're very pleased with the number of responses and the, uh, the amount um, of feedback we did receive from the community. So I feel very confident in this, in this calendar. So spring break is the second full week in March. And then our last day, we were able to wrap up the Thursday, May 24th, before that Memorial Day, which again is a highly preferred um, day to make sure that we end that second semester. So those are our highlights. Any questions? Anything that's a major difference from next year? No, sir. Really, it's, it's kind of the, the typical math problem of determining, making sure that the two semesters are even, that we start middle of the week, we entertain and we finish at, um, in December so that we can finish a you know, semester for our finals. And then same thing, second semester, we return so that there's enough days to equal our 180, which is required, so that we can get out before Memorial Day. See so. the first semester still a few days difference because you're trying to finish. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay. Thanks, Tracy. Mm -hmm. And then the professional development days, they're not on here um, because the, the 10 professional development days. The, the early dismissal yeah. days for the middle schools mm -hmm. and elementary schools. They are on the calendar. They're not in the presentation, but they're not a function of the calendar committee. They're a function of the professional development committee mm -hmm. um, who make the determination how we're going to use that professional development time. So I think there's nine early release days in this calendar oh. for middle schools and elementary schools only. High schools have leash starts. Because there was just a concern, I, um, somebody had a, um, some staff had a concern about the professional development days and asked, you know, oh, well, could we have full days off or, you know, do they have to remain half days? How would that affect the calendar? That, that is a great question. <coughs> that, that is a great question. So as Dr. Rebelli, <laughs> as Dr. Rebelli mentioned, that is a PDC committee function in determining that. So Suzanne Dada, director of PD, actually comes twice to our meetings and discusses what that committee has talked about in terms of the, the early release days that you see and the late start Mondays. That's a function of theirs. The other piece is that those early release days do count as student attendance days. So we would have to extend the calendar in order to attain our 180 if we moved from early, you know, having that be an early release day to no students coming at all. So the staff is fully aware. I mean, they're able to participate. It's a in really good question because we yeah. have a lot of questions about it, and people are confused by it. So it's an understanding piece. But um, the the key is is that if you have a full day professional development where students don't attend, you cannot count that as a student attendance day. So it, like Tracy said earlier, it's a math problem. It really is. So the half days do count as a as a student attendance day. Okay. And tons of people have that same question, and when they hear, oh, that makes sense, then they do understand that it would extend the school year. If we reduced it to, you know, let's say we took our nine days and took them to five, we would have to extend the school year. By five four five. days. <laughs> oh, yeah. Four, five, nine. Then we'll have yes. out. Extend the school year. Yes. That, that might not be probably. No. <laughs> that would not be probably. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? All right. The motion is to postpone the approval. And again, this postponement comes up this way a lot so that it can come before the public three times. So we bring it up tonight, we'll bring it up one more time, and then we'll vote on it another time. So the, the motion on the floor is to postpone the approval until the December 17th Board of Education meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed, say no. Great, that passes, Ms. Beaver. Thank, Thank you very much. The next item is the Rockford uh, Secondary Math, the curriculum, and this is gonna be the first reading. Uh, so we need a motion to postpone the approval of secondary math curriculum as presented until the December 17th, 2015 board meeting. So moved. We have a motion and a second. Great. And uh, Lisa Lingle and Shelley Willock are going to talk to us about this. Good evening. I'm here tonight to present five math curriculum from secondary level. Lisa Lingle, our secondary math facilitator, is here. Um, you've all seen the product, but really what Lisa's going to hit on tonight is the process that we go through when we build this curriculum. Lisa's done a lot to challenge the thinking of our math teachers in terms of how we instruct math and the research behind that. So she's going to share that with you this evening. Thank you. Good evening. The writing and implementation of math standards requires a lot more than just a discussion about content. It really looks, it's an understanding of three core shifts in math instruction. The first shift is about identifying essential standards or essential course outcomes. 
which allows teachers to go deeper into the topics that they're, they're teaching, uh, rather than kind of skimming the, the surface level of the concepts. The second shift is about coherence. Our writing teams took a lot of time, spent a lot of time creating coherent progressions of topics for students. Students are gonna see concepts, concepts as they spiral and build through the curriculum, thus allowing them to make connections and inc increase its retention. The third shift is about rigor. So we're looking at kind of a balance between procedural skill, um, fluency, and application. The shift also encourages students to engage in real world tasks that require them to persevere in problem solving and communicate their reasoning. So as a result, math classrooms are gonna be a lot of discussions and explore, explorations of no more engaging than what you've seen traditionally. In the spring of 2015, the math department conducted a K through 12 math program evaluation that reviewed the latest research in math education. These five recommendations are applicable to all math courses as we move forward with the curriculum writing process. A major focus for mathematics, as Shelley Wallach pointed out, is a necessary PD for teachers to make that transition to achieve the shifts in instruction. In addition to PD that I have provided through summer workshops and through the course of the school year, I've had several well-respected math leaders come to the district to do some presentations and some trainings. Um, in 2013, Dr. Chin was in to do some initial training on the shifts of instruction and uh, the mathematical practices. And then mm -hmm. last year, uh, Andrew Stadel was here to model some of the practices and what they look like in the classroom. Um, and just this fall, Steve Leinwand was here to do extensive training on beliefs in, um, uh, productive beliefs in math education and teaching and learning of mathematics. <coughs> All the courses I'm presenting tonight have minor content revisions. Um, for Algebra 2, it's, it, we removed the conic sections and matrices. Those were shifted to Algebra 3 in our finite math course. Um, we added a unit on statistics. And the biggest change overall for all of the courses is the restructuring, as I mentioned before, of the content so that we make sure we have that spiral and can build that, uh, increase that retention for our students. The three semester courses that you see here, the, the biggest change um, that is fairly new is that we are offering, offering the Algebra 3 as a college credit course now through UMSL. And as you look at the changes for the curriculum over the, you know, from 2009 to 2015, it really is a change in developing and, and creating those instructional units that allow us to then sequence and pace to give us a more uh, a guided approach. Identifying those essential outcomes, our essential standards was crucial um, in our development of our district common final exam. Does anybody have any questions? What do you suspect your average math student in Rockwood will, what's this, the progression, the freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year? Because, I mean, I'm looking, you know, I'm mm -hmm. a former math teacher. I'm seeing these. I'm thinking, oh, I would take that. I would take this. I would take that. What do you think is the, I know, that's whatever. <laughs> we have a large number of students that will take algebra in eighth grade, uh -huh. algebra one. And if that's the case, then they would do geometry, geometry. as a, a freshman. Mm -hmm. And then depending on whether or not they're on the honors track, this is where it will differ. When you get to algebra two, you have the honors algebra two as well. And from Algebra 2, you could take the three semester courses that I just mentioned, the Algebra 3, the Trig, the Finite Math. We also have an elementary statistics course that we're going to work on some revisions for as well. If you go with the Honors Algebra 2 route, it includes the trigonometry. That's what makes it an honors course and a weighted course. And then that would take you into the pre-calc directly from there. Mm -hmm. Those semester courses from Algebra 3 to Trig, then they would go into pre-calc after that as seniors. The point is, kids can, oh. can, I mean, the options are just mm -hmm. amazing. And throw in all the other AP classes you have as well. It's, it's this is impressive. Is the Algebra 3, that's, is that a fairly new course, or is that an extension of Algebra 2? Is it more in depth or what? We work? have had Algebra 3 mm -hmm. 
at least since 2009. Um, <laughs> I don't know how long it's been around, but it's been around for a number of years. It's just that we added the college credit offering in the last couple of years. Well, how did the colleges look at that? Because they used to look at, well, if you had algebra two, the algebra two is algebra two, then you go into pre-calc, calc, mm -hmm. and et cetera. I, I honestly had to submit our algebra two curriculum and the Algebra 3 curriculum, because when I first initially su submitted the Algebra 3, they're like, well, you're missing this, this, this. And I'm like, well, we do that in Algebra 2. So I submitted the Algebra 2, and then we got approval to offer that for the college course. How are you going to be able to, any time we do curriculum, how, how do you gauge the success of what you're doing? Mm -hmm. it, it takes years to do, or a few years to do that. It does. Um, it's, it's a rough start, especially with the instructional shifts. And that's what the PD is so important. Um, but with the implementation or the uh, alignment to our Missouri learning standards, um, <coughs> teachers are, after the second time, I guess the, the first time through, they're like, oh, this is so hard, this is so hard. But they start seeing that kids really are getting it and retaining it. And personally, as a parent, my oldest son went through the old traditional path without the changes to the instruction and the different uh, curriculum standards. And I really, with my daughter, she has gone through all the new changes. And I've seen an increased amount of retention. That's the biggest part that I, you know, that I see as I work with her. She retains the information. I think that's what our teachers are seeing, too, with that, that spiraling. They're coming back to it so that kids are. Does, does all of this fit real well into STEM? I mean, this, when you're talking STEM, this. It's one part of STEM. It is a, it's a piece. Math is kind of more the language of STEM um, because it's the, the science and the technology pieces that, 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 you know, they're using a lot of the mathematics in their field. But I collaborate daily with our science coordinator, Crystal <coughs> McDowell, and work well with uh, Bob Deneau as well now in the STEM position. So we're, we're working to try and come up with some uh, connections that we can make um, within the curriculum and actually call them out. And going back to that success piece too, we as a curriculum keep our eye, as a curriculum department, keep our eye on a lot of things. We look at the student data, we look at um, teacher feedback. So, you know, this year we've talked quite a bit with Algebra 2 about some of the changes that they've gone through in the last couple mm -hmm. of years and really stepped in and tried to support <clears throat> teachers in that process too because they can tell us pretty quickly when there's a problem or when there's a gap somewhere and we can address that. So. We listen to them, we listen to what our parents give us in terms of feedback, and we really look at that student data to see where we're landing. Have we given you, or the board, or the superintendent, Mr. Rooney, have you been given the resources you need to get the teachers trained to where you, where you want them to be? At this time, yes. I, did, I feel like Good I do have the resources. There you go. Well, I, right, and, and I'll, I'll step in, <laughs> but we could always do more. There's no doubt about it. I mean, our, I, I think that that's, Obviously, the key to success with, with curriculum is implementing with fidelity. And you implement with fidelity when you have the appropriate professional development and the buy-in to, to what you're doing. And, and we do, I think, do an admirable job of that in Rockwood. And obviously, I have nothing to do with that, so it's, it, it's fun to see. Um, but I think we hear that from teachers a lot, and mm -hmm. it's that balancing act. It's kind of like the calendar discussion. I mean, the, uh, it, it's a financial commitment. And it's also a time commitment because we also hear that you know these are great teachers that that are doing this work for us and they don't want to be out of the classroom exactly. more than more than they have to. So it's a balancing act, it but is. yeah, time but is I think we do a good job. Sure. Thank you. Really, uh, just a, a, a personal comment. The uh, because I've had two sons go on to Missouri S and T now, and one of the things that they do when the, you're when you're a senior in, in high school is you go down there and they put you in a room and a big light on you and they make you take a math test. Um, they did very well, and the program worked very well for them. Um, what they all and, and not just my sons, but the, but I knew several of them that graduated last year, and they all said the same thing. The thing they had the biggest trouble with was trigonometry because they had had it a couple of three years earlier here. Uh, so I don't know if there's any kind of a review, I, and I can only imagine other schools do the same thing. They, they place you in math based upon a, a test that's an hour and a half long one Saturday morning. So if there's any kind of a, I don't know if we can or maybe the school should do that themselves, but any kind of a review just to, they've had the math, they did well in it, they understood it. Right. If you haven't seen it for a couple of years and they sit you down with a pencil and say go, it, it, it's a tough 
spiral. With the trigonometry, it actually does spiral for quite a few of our courses. So students see that over and over. You know, the introductory course, our introductory trigonometry, we write triangle trig, it's in geometry. Okay. And then if you have the honors algebra two, you get a really quick, fast uh, introduction to all the trigonometry pieces, or we have that semester trig course. Okay. Um, and then in pre-calc is when they hit it sure. again pretty heavily, actually. I just right. had to tutor my son right. last night. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Happily, they didn't ask test. me to take the test, but, but so. that's, that's the part that yeah. I was getting reports back Thank that they you. were having. Thank you. I appreciate the feedback. Any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, the motion is actually to postpone the approval of the curriculum until the next meeting. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Ms. Bito, that passes. Thank you very Thank much. You. Right, the next item is on uh, I skip one bond issue purchases. Did I skip one? I did skip one. No, bond issue purchases between $7,500 and $150,000. Um, as I point out, probably too often for everybody. Uh, we're going to somewhat arbitrarily divide the, the bond issue purchases into those below 150000 and those above 150000 so that we can take those that are below that kind of in one big lump sum and go through them, and then we vote independently on those that are over $150,000 just so that we shed a little light on what those are. So, um, Mr. Friend and Mr. Rooney are here to... No. Well, Mike Schneider, I'm going Mike Schneider, I'm sorry. Construction Services Coordinator. All right. Uh, so the motion, let me get back to that. The motion is to approve the bond issue purchases and related contracts from $7,500 to $150,000 as submitted. Second. We have a motion? Second. And a second. Mike. Yes, please. Oh, description uh, for CDC. Uh, that's the um, civil engineering design fees for the uh, for the projects that are, are coming up for the summer. They're listed there. Kelson Elementary's, Kelson Elementary's uh, envelope replacement, South Springs uh, middle office renovation and nurse uh, nurse office addition, uh, and two of the kitchen cafeteria expansions at uh, Stanton and Utah Valley. Okay. And go on to the next one. Please. Unless somebody has a question on that one. This is uh, SCI Engineering. That's uh, geotechnical uh, engineers that we're employed to do soils exploration to determine how uh, what the soil is at each of these expansions and uh, tell us what we can build on them so that everything's stable and lasts a long time. Okay. One more. Oh, and that occurs at Stanton, Utah, LaSalle, and, and Marquette. Uh, and then Clayton Engineering is a civil engineer uh, consultant somewhere to CEDC, but they'll be working with the architect for the STEM labs uh, for the ad market, the expansion market. Okay. And in accordance with the state law, you don't get bids on these services. You you have a fixed fee amount and select the best vendor you can for each one. So. Okay. Any questions and comments about these? All right, then the motion is to approve these bond issues that were just presented uh, between $7,500 and $150,000. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Let's be that passes. And I think you have uh, the next one is for items $150,000 and above. I know it's for Facility Solutions Group or FSG. Uh, it's, it's the Engineering Design Services, <coughs> excuse me, for the district-wide HVAC project. Can you speak up a little bit? I can't. Or in the microphone again. <laughs> it's, it's the, it's the uh, Engineering and Design Services for the district-wide HVAC projects that will be done this summer. Uh, it's um, the negotiated fee for a $3.9 million uh, overall project budget. Uh, it's the project locations are the C the CCL in Old State, uh, the Selvage Middle School, uh, Marquette High School, and Rockwood Summit High School. Okay. And they would, that would be from design, schematic design, all the way through construction and acceptance. Okay. Just like the other ones, this is a fixed 6% fee, and you go out looking for the best person to make that design. Yes. Right. Okay. Anyone have any questions or comments about that one? That seems to be a lot of money, but that's normal. This, is that right, Matt? Well, it's 6% it's of the total anticipated construction cost. So it seems like a lot of money, but the construction cost is almost $4 million. So gotcha. 
So the design would be the that. That's the bottom yeah. end. That's yeah. 6% yeah. is right. the bottom right. end of the. That includes everything from uh, cradle to grave from the very beginning of the schematic design all the way through final acceptance. That's not a one-time fee. That's process all the way through. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what's what's that what's that range that market range? And you and I look at six percent uh, up to thirteen. Between six and fifteen percent. Fifteen. Yeah. Okay. We're getting away with six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's at the bottom end of the of the range you would yeah. pay for design services. All right. Any other questions or comments? Then the motion on the floor is to approve the bond issue purchase. This one bond issue purchase, which is over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Okay. So Oh, I'm sorry. Did we did we not do a motion? I. I oh. So, All right, let's, let's try that again because either I messed I up or we didn't catch we it. Did, I, didn't I need a motion to approve the purchases and related contracts over $150,000 from the Facility Solutions Group for district-wide HVAC modernization in fiscal year 16. So second. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. There we go. I think you're right. I did skip that. Sorry about that. Um, all right, at this point, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. Very well, Ms. Beto, that passes. Thank you, gentlemen. The next agenda item is, uh, does not require a motion. It's the, well, I guess it's just an informational item on the school board elections and terms. And Gretchen, were you going to present yeah. something on that? It probably does, then. Uh, actually, it does require a motion. Oh, I didn't write it. That's right. Okay. Uh, it does say it's action. What do we need a motion to do? It said action, and I did not, and this one was mine. Okay. I didn't prove that. I'm sorry. The motion would be to approve policy 0320 um, school board elections and terms the revisions to that. Um, the um, legislative session this year uh, made some changes to things, and it's in the content there, it's just coming up in that first paragraph that talks about that the legislation has made some changes, and legal counsel has gone to our policies, reviewed them, and looked at them and said these are the changes required by law. Right. So we are asking tonight, and we have three policies that are like this. We are asking to forego the pen problem in the, um, and the first reading and the second reading and give approval tonight, since these are legal requirements that we, um, as a board, as a school district, are required to have our policies in line with these right. requirements. And, and it is important and timely because the sign-ups for the next board election are coming up in a couple of weeks. So. Yes, they are, and that, the, the timing is very critical also on, on this particular one. Um, on the other two, there's, um, they're related to students and, and things that we need to do for students, and those are very time sensitive also. So okay. those were the two reasons, the legal requirements and the time factor that we ask if we could do these in one meeting tonight. Okay. And you, and, if um, you can, well, each one will be broken down with this, its own motion. I'm yeah, you can see the, uh, the changes there both on the screens that we have in front of us and, and projected behind us. Uh, so what the motion we need is to approve the changes to policy 0320 regarding school board elections and terms. So moved. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Is there any conversation or question? I just wanted to mention, kind of piggyback on, on what Gretchen's saying, just to, to remind the board that these are specific examples of what I've talked about in the past regarding our PIM process that really um, they need to be um, separate from the PIN process because this is there's not a whole lot we can control on this. It's 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 driven by statute and we we it, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to we don't really have the option. Multiple readings it, it, it is what it is. So we get them to you in advance and then we um, just move them through in one meeting. Right. Any questions or comments? In that case the motion on the floor is to approve the revisions to that policy 0320. All those in favor please say aye. Aye. Any opposed say no. Great, thank you, Ms. Beto, that passes. Uh, the next one is the same kind of thing. We need a motion to approve the changes to policy 2710, reporting child abuse. We have a motion and a second. Uh, imagine that's coming up behind us again. These were legal requirements, uh, and, and some of this is just almost administrative stuff. It talks about what the abuse hotline is. It talks about how big the poster has to be for information. Um, don't really have much choice. And, We'll, sure. we'll comply with state law. So, is there any conversation or questions on this one? I, I pushed back on state law as long as I could on this one because uh, it just there's some pieces to it, quite frankly, that I just don't necessarily agree with. But uh, but we're doing as as we're told, and again, it's driven by statute. What parts don't you agree with? Mm -hmm. Do you want to elaborate or just not? It's not worth elaborating. Okay. 
<clears throat> he thought the poster should be 12 by 17 instead of 11 by 17. And it, I, I can't get them off. Right? The, 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 the law actually states we have to have one of those posters in every single restroom yeah. in our schools in all grade levels, um, whether kids can read them or not. And um, there's just all kinds of things to think about with it. And, and what I get the spirit of it, I absolutely agree with. Um, but I think there are more prominent locations and more appropriate locations to put them. But we've got to abide by the law and put them in our bathrooms. And that's what I explored and why I was dragging my feet for so long. And thanks to Terry's leadership, he kept kicking me saying, hey, we, yeah, well, what are we doing here? So anyway, it is what it is. All right. Any other questions or comments? In that case, the motion on the floor is to approve the revisions to policy 2710. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, aye. say no. Ms. Peter, that passes. Uh, I believe we have one more that's the same. With these being in the schools, and the, you know, are they going to be explained to the children, like the elementary school? These, the, you know, these posters are going to be put in the restrooms. This is what they are. This is what child abuse actually means. Yeah, yeah. From a teacher um, end of conversation, not not school wide, or not an explanation on the, because it's. It's it's a it's a sensitive topic and it takes more than just saying hey kids yeah you know so so our teachers will do a good job with that and 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 that's who we would want because to be quite honest with you if you ask me to go talk to kindergartners and explain mm -hmm. those in their restrooms I don't really know what I would say mm -hmm. but our kindergarten teacher kindergarten teachers will know what to say and and um, they'll handle that very well okay uh, we did just approve that right. Uh, so the next one is um, the same thing, another another policy. Uh, I need a motion to approve the changes to policy 6115 state mandated curriculum. You have a motion? Second. And a second. Uh, same thing here, the changes can be put up on the screen there. Um, state law required teaching of certain things and these are, again, sometimes uncomfortable topics, but things about sexual predators, etc. Um, again, these are state mandated. We don't really have any options on this. We need to do it. Does anybody have any comments or questions about this one? All right. In that case, uh, the motion on the floor is to approve the changes to policy 6115. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, say no. <clears throat> Great. Let's be you know that passes. Next is the uh, COPE Committee, Communications, Outreach, and Public Engagement. Uh, I'm not sure who's... We don't, I, we don't have an update. We have a meeting on Monday, so. Well, there's no. <coughs> there's a meeting that's, on Monday. That's the update. All right. Uh, that so, was just informational. We didn't need a motion for that. Okay, so on the next, okay, go ahead, sorry. Now the next item is uh, planning for the next board meeting for December 17th, which by the way, will be back at Crestview. Mm -hmm. so, um, so, so COPE should be added on to that one. That COPE should get added okay. there. Please. Dr. Kinder will be giving the update. <laughs> there, it looks like there's going to be, uh, there may be some more bond related issues, some other things. You're getting very close to the holiday there. You might have any suggestions or comments on the agenda as it stands right now. You still have another week that you can add things if we need to. If anybody has a request for that, you can send it to uh, Ms. Beto or me. Or can we make sure the heat works at Crestview? Yeah, mm, please. Four it was a lot warmer. We were behind the curtain because the spotlights were oh, right down. Oh, behind the curtain curtain. was great. All right, that's just a discussion item. Um, the next item. <laughs> I want to mention one thing about uh, the uh, board agenda. It's just a just a heads up that after the 17th, our next meeting is January the 6th, which is which is practically right when we get back from um, from the the winter break. And I'm just telling you that that I'm I'm intentionally trying to keep that agenda light. Um, because of the fact that just preparation and, and, and with people being away and making sure that you all have information in a timely manner. So um, just be cognizant of that as far as adding agenda items if they're requested. It may be good for us to push that on to January uh, for, the, for the second meeting of January. Okay. Uh, the next item is future agenda presentations and events to attend. Uh, I did get a, an invitation here for the board to attend Fairway Feast. That is next Wednesday at 105. Um, I'll pass this down, everybody can take a look at it. Um, if you would like to attend that, uh, they would ask you to RSVP, and there's an address on here to do that. It's 105 p.m. It's next Wednesday the 9th. 
Um, it says we're thankful that you are part of our Fairway family. So I take it this is a uh, kind of a holiday ce celebration with a, a meal. So, so. That's this one way in the other. I'm sorry, what's that? 105. 105. 105. 105. Right. 105. Let's pass by lunch. <laughs> <laughs> There's also the, the breakfast for the SROs. Yep, Thursday. <clears throat> That's this one. Yeah. This next, next Thursday. Uh, next, next Thursday? Thursday. Yeah. Terry? Terry. The SRO uh, appreciation. Is that next Thursday? Yeah. Yes. Well, it's next week. Wednesday. Wednesday. Uh, it's the 10th. I think, I think that's 30, Thursday. 8.30, 10.15, I think. Uh, that is Thursday the 10th. <laughs> Thursday, <laughs> Thursday the 10th at 8.30 a.m. is when that is. Okay. Uh, also on the 9th, the, uh, the day before the 10th, um, is the Parkway School District Board of Education meeting. And they're going to talk about at that meeting the Rockwood Parkway Community Education Program. Um, I'm planning to attend that night, just I'm not planning to speak, but just be in attendance kind of in support of everything that Mike Seppi has done for that program. Um, if anybody else would like to go, I'm sure they would be happy to have some more in attendance. And, you know, you don't sit through enough board meetings to have a chance that night. Um, I am going to attend that. And I'm planning on attending too. Good. Um, all right, that's the event, end of our adjournment this evening. I give everybody a chance if anybody has any comments or questions or... Nothing? All right, then we will stand adjourned. Thank you very much for coming.